Welcome to the Next Play Podcast. We're talking in season two about building a championship mindset. I've got uh, we got some special guests tonight. We have Josh with me as uh, co-host, and we have two ladies from the Bryan College Women's Basketball Team. We have Samantha Russell and Caitlin Hennessy. Both of them are excellent players and are all stars, all conference ladies. It's great to have you. How are we doing this evening? I'm pretty good. good. Doing well. Good, good, good. So, hey, the first question I have is for you guys is like when y'all when you guys did y'all ever play high school basketball against each other not regular um, season, but summer camps i think all right so both of yeah. you guys have been very 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 good for a long time at brian and brian for our listeners outside of the area has been incredible that you guys have won like uh five straight i mean you guys have won the regular season every year and the tournament every year but one right Am I right on that? So you've been in the national tournament every year. So, uh, so anyway, so as two really good players, who wins one-on-one -on -one games between you two? Like y'all ever like? We've never played. Um, yeah. All right, Honestly, so Kate, though, I'd pr I'd probably say Caitlin. She's more of a one-on-one -on -one player than I am. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Where did All right, so tell school? us a little. Josh asked where you guys went to high school. They're both fairly local here, Josh, to the Southeast Tennessee area. I say fairly. They're very yeah. local. Yeah, uh, I went to Teleco Plains High School. I went to McMinn County. Oh, okay. I thought you went to McMinn Central. Nope, I went to County. Ooh, that would have been yeah. a bad mistake to make, wouldn't it? <laughs> yep. Wow. So, uh, who was your – was Coach Tucker your coach at McMinn County? No, it was uh, Coach McPhail. Coach McPhail, good deal. And uh, do you know who coached uh, Samantha there? Do you go by Sam or Samantha? What do you want us to call you? Uh, usually Sam. That's just easier to say. Easier to say. So, uh, do, yeah. guess who uh, uh, Sam's coach was at Telecom? Brooke McKinnon. Oh, really? Yeah, which I don't know what Brooke well, said. Well, go ahead, Sam. Actually, she was. She didn't become head coach until after I was gone. Oh, okay. She's I a had, legend. I had um, Gary Tucker. Oh, that, there you go. Yeah. One of the Tuckers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, so both you guys have been really good in this area in high school and now at Bryan. What is uh what is our current record at Bryan? You guys have played a tougher schedule this year, haven't you? Went out to California and uh, played Austin. Yeah. So what's our record now? I know we've lost four. Yeah, that's all I know. I, I, I think, think we lost four. Yeah, I think we're nine and four right now. Yeah. Which is probably the worst record you guys have had at Christmas ever, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but we've, you know, we've played some really, really good teams. Um, I mean, I think like Vanguard, you know, ranked top ten in the country, and we played them super well, only lost by six. Um, Ryan Hart, who's another one, the other one we lost to, um, they played, been playing super well, only lost by five. So, I mean, all the losses that we've had have just been against really, really good teams, really good matchups. So I think it's, it's been good for us. You, you guys at one point, Sam, were you guys both on the winning streak? Would you win like 80 in a row in conference play or something like that? What was the streak? Did I exaggerate it or what was it? No, it was close to 90 before and it was like, Last year was our first loss at home in a couple of years, too, and it was our first conference loss since I was been there was last year. That's – that's uh, Josh, think about that. You know that league that they're in. Yeah. You go – I mean, they're traveling. It's not like they're chartering planes. I mean, they're going on the bus, and they're winning 90 straight conference games. wild. I mean, it, it's really one of the most amazing stats I've ever heard of a team – you know, at any level, it's just so impressive that you guys have done that. What would y'all right. say is the key, the key to some of your success as a team? Um, well, going in for this year, at least, I will say like a big thing Coach Gabe has come in and changed is like defensively. Um, I think we're much, much stronger than we ever have been. And that's why we've been able to like hold our own against really good teams. 
Um, Because a lot of the teams we play now, they've got, you know, usually a lot of size on us and stuff. Mm. Um, But when we take care of things defensively, that goes straight to our offense. Um, We, I think before, in years past, at least from what I experienced, we are a very offensive-minded team. Not that we're not now and we still can't, you know, play offense, but um, I think now we really take take care of it on both ends of the floor. Wow, that's good. So, all right, so what is the key for you guys? You guys have been in the national tournament every year, every year. So what do you think the absolute key is uh, to making a deep run? Caitlin, why don't you go first? What's the key to making a deep run in the national tournament? Um. Well, I think one thing is just, like, our players, like, one thing about makes us a good team, like, we – obviously recruit good players but we're good on and off the court like good players and I think another thing is like we're very disciplined team because like the season can get very long like most teams are done in February and we're stretching out in March and stuff so like just stay in discipline and just stay in like looking at the goal ahead is one good thing like we we have to understand like what we're playing for like everybody's playing for like uh conference championships like in the season but We've done that, so we know, like, we're looking further ahead, like, into the national tournament. Like, that's one of our bigger goals to work towards. That's good. Caitlin, what's your uh, high this year? What's your career high, dude? Mm, my high this year, like, points was, I guess, against Milligan was – I had 30. But my like, career high, I think I had it my freshman year, was 34 against Reinhardt. Wow. So, how many points have you scored in your – career would you say uh close to 1500 i think how about you sam how many have you scored uh total i think i'm around somewhere in the 1200s wow good deal what do you what do y'all think is something that separates uh you know college basketball players because i mean i think that size is what separates a lot of people from being, you know, D3, NAI, or D1. Everybody that's a college player can flat out play. What do you think is the thing that separates college players that high school players should know uh, that, you know, high school players that have college aspirations should know? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was, like, just the pace of the game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, high school, everything just seems really slow. And then you get, no matter what level of college you play, everything is just a lot faster. Um, So I think just being able to kind of, you know, get used to that adjustment before you get in or just know that that's coming because it just, that's everywhere pretty much, no matter what level you play at. Um, But that was probably the biggest adjustment for me. So what did you you Go ahead, Josh. You can you can build that stuff into your uh, workout routine. One of the some of the best advice that I ever got was make sure your workouts are uncomfortably fast. Like whatever movement you're making, whether you're catch and shoot threes, whatever you're working on a quicker release, but you're trying to work out at a faster speed than you're comfortable with, and then that kind of just becomes your speed, and that translates the levels up. So, Caitlin, what would you say is the key to – I mean, you you score all these points. What is the key uh, mindset-wise? Let's say when you're in a little bit of a slump, when you miss a shot, how do you handle that and go on to the to the next play? Well, I just feel like one thing about, like, my, my gameplay is not really focused on scoring. It's because, like, I'm a point guard. So, as long as I can just help the team score, like – because, like, a big part of my game is assists, which is I'm, like, leading the team and stuff. So, like, if I'm not scoring, how can I help my teammates score? How can I get a shot created for somebody else to make it easier for them? Yeah. How about you, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I think if I'm not able to score, then I try to do other things. Like, I'm more of, like, a rebounder or try to take care of something on defense, you know. Um, you just got to look to impact the game in other ways other than scoring. So how about the pressure of being you guys? I mean, you guys are, I mean, high expectations, you're high achievers. Uh, How do you deal with the pressure? I think one thing is just being calm. Like that's something like I've always strived on is like being calm during a game. And that's something like I'm very good at. And I think it comes with being a point guard and stuff. Like I always say like, 
teams want to pressure you and want to speed you up. Like, you always have to keep, like, you're going to play on my pace on offense and stuff. So, you just got to be calm. And, like, for the pressure, like, you just have to understand, like, you are a good player and you're going to go out there and perform how you perform. And that doesn't – your performance on the court doesn't make you who the person who you are. So, how – like, doubts. I mean, everyone has doubts. Michael Jordan has doubts. Everyone – has doubts how do you deal with those doubts that every player ever josh you even had doubts and you were the you would you admit you had doubts josh as a player yeah i i went through phases of my career where i had doubts they were short-lived but yeah yeah all right it's so okay yeah caitlin josh was a uh a more of a scoring point guard than a passing point guard so really different, you know than than you are so so caitlin how do you deal with those doubts um, I feel like you just have to trust in yourself and the person and, like, your teammates and your coach just to know, like, everything around you is just going to be okay and, like, it's just all going to work itself out. How about you, Sam? How, how have you dealt – how do you deal with your the stuff that pops in your head at times? Um, well, I think you can kind of combat before, like, in your preparation phase. You know, if you – prepare accordingly if you do the extra work if you shoot work out all those things and like you'll have the confidence in yourself that you will do well um now of course you know there still will be doubts at times and stuff but I think if you know that okay like I've put the work in I've done all this extra stuff so like I know that I can be good um so that's what's kind of helped me and it helped me to like do more you know in the off season so confidence comes from preparation, number one. That's that's good. But so what about in the heat of the moment, pressure? Do you like pressure? Do you like uh, being in a pressure situation with the ball in your hands? How about it? Uh, we'll let you go first, Sam. Um, I mean, yeah. I think, like, within our team, me and Caitlin are, like, obviously some of the top players, the top scorers. So, like, I just know that my teammates – they would want the ball in our hands probably because they know that me and Caitlin can score. Um, so I know that they have confidence in me. I know that coach has confidence in me and that helps me have confidence in myself um, in situations like that. So personally, yeah, I like, I think it drives me to be better in high pressure situations. Gotcha. That's good. How about you, Caitlin? Yeah, I think with, the amount of like experience I've had because like I've been doing this for a while like it's just something that comes natural like this like like if I'm in a pressure situation in our next game that's not gonna be my first time or my last pressure situation and another thing that helps is like our teammate looks for us like if we're in a pre pressure situation they know they're looking for me and Sam to do something so if also if we like do something wrong in that situation our teammates doesn't like shame us or like like uh say anything bad because they know like it's it's me and Sam that's going to have to take control. Man, Next question, important. Josh. You got it. What advice do y'all have for any of the up-and-coming high school players that want to play college basketball, that have those kind of dreams? What what would you say they need to keep in mind? Um, I would say don't have super high expectations going into your first year. I feel like, you know, especially for players that come from a program, like a high school program where they have to do everything, where they have to score, do it all. Um, you know, most likely they're going to a team where like a lot of people can score and they don't have to do everything anymore. And um, that can kind of get in their head sometimes. Maybe they don't play as well anymore because, you know, they're not getting as many minutes as they used to or, um you know, as much as attention as they used to. So I'd just say, you know, not having all these expectations of, oh, I'm going to play 40 minutes a game and um, get all the attention still. How about you, Caitlin? I agree. I think a big thing is attitude as well, because mm -hmm. going from uh, high school to college, like you're used to being the senior, you're the vet, like you understand, like you've been there and then now, tables completely turn and then you're you're the rookie you're the freshman so you might have an attitude towards the same attitude you had as a senior but you can't do that as a freshman because like now girls are older than you and have more experience than you has been playing at a higher level than you longer than you so you just have that you have to have a better attitude like a good attitude going in like kind of like wait my turn 
Let me fill things out, stuff like that. How awesome. so, Kelly? Who do you like the least out of these three schools? You just pick you, you just pick the one you like the least: McMinn Central, uh, Bradley Central, or Walker Valley. Which one do you like the least out of those those three? Um, Hold on, let's see if Sam can guess. Which one do you think she likes the least out of those three? I'd say probably Central. What What about that? I would say Bradley was my least favorite. <laughs> yeah. That's that's funny. So all right. So anyway, sorry about the brief uh uh diversion there. So all right, so what how do you guys deal with the grind? And I don't even like that word grind, but how do you deal with the the length of the season? How much is asked of you? How much practice time you have? And and then what's your majors too? I mean, I know y'all's team GPA is like a three nine or whatever. So what is um how do you deal with the academic piece of it? And what's your major, Caitlin? Uh forensic accounting. I actually graduated in May with one degree and I'm coming back and getting my second undergrad. Oh, well, there you go. Forensic yeah. accounting. Yeah. Forensic accounting. What's your major, Sam? Exercise and health science. What are you going to do with that, Sam? You going to teach, coach, maybe? Uh, and do well, exercise um, and health science stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Which mean, is pretty, what? Like, what is exercise what do you think and health she's science do stuff, Coach it. Stubble? I don't know, but a lot of people, they, they're trainers. A lot of people, they do, they go to grad school. Some yeah. people coach, some people teach. That's why I'm asking the question. All right. Okay. So, so and, and Sam, uh, you better have your life completely figured out right now, too. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm kidding. So, I didn't know you could, like, go to college and then get an, go a whole another, have a fifth year of eligibility, get a whole new undergrad. <laughs> I should have done that. Caitlin, yeah. jo Josh majored in eligibility. So that's and then he minored in if procrastination. If he had a double minor in Go ahead. Yeah, he, he went to Tennessee Temple, which have y'all ever heard of Tennessee Temple, Caitlin? Tennessee Temple. You never heard of it, have you? You have uh, Yeah, so Josh was a double major in plagiarism and procrastination. That's what he was doing. I can't believe y'all go to Brian and haven't heard of Tennessee Temple. We that's used to be... that's saying a lot. That's pretty that's sad. sad right. You know, it's sad yeah, days. Yeah, really, yeah. So what are you doing with forensic accounting? I mean, that what's that like? Law enforcement and counting, or what are we doing? We're gonna work for the FBI. I think I asked yeah. you that last when I did a clinic. You're gonna be in the FBI, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, my teacher is like my advisor wants me to apply for FBI or IRS, something like that. IRS. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That's uh man you want to do that go for, all the, go for the big hitters go well yeah, exactly my first degree is just in basic accounting so i didn't get into like the law enforcement side until this year so it's yeah. like after speaking with my teacher and stuff it sparked an interest that i have to do like been doing some more research in and figuring out stuff so you can go after yeah go after just stay away from one heartbeat we're doing everything right by the book <laughs> right there all right, so uh, so the question back to the question was, how do you manage all that? You know, how did you, how have you managed? This is your fourth or fifth year now at Brian, Caitlin. Fifth. Fifth, and this is your fourth, right, Sam? But you went, you transferred from in here, so this is your fourth, right? This is my fifth, too, actually. Wow, wow. So how have y'all managed this? How have you managed your time? Well, I would say we are very different people, me and Sam, on how we manage our time. So I, I think it's just about finding what works best for you. I am not a morning person at all. So, like, I have later classes, and I choose to do my work, like, during the evening. So, like, after practice, I know, like, that's my time set, set for homework. And, like, also understand, like, I have games, I have practices and stuff like that. So, I always try to work ahead because there's just some nights like you just can't do it. So instead of waiting for the last moment, if you just work a little bit ahead, then you can have one or two free nights. But you just have to understand like your time is limited. So you just have to figure out the best way to manage it for yourself. Hmm. How, about, how about you, Sam? So how are you guys different? Um, well, I'd say I'm more of a morning person. So I like to schedule my classes if I can in the morning to get that done. Um, and then I try to do my homework like throughout the day before practice. So then I have my e evenings free. Um, so yeah, we're just a little different in that way. That's, that's funny. So how do you clear your head and not 
overthink. You know, one of the things is I work all over the country with female athletes that female athletes tend to overthink. And I think part of that is because they're mainly, they're smarter than guys and there's a lot more going on in there. And that intelligence is great in a lot of ways, but how do we keep from overthinking? Uh, Caitlin, you go first on that. Well, I would consider like myself personally, just not in basketball, but in everything to be a very calm person. And like, I think that really transfers over to the court. So like, I just understand like, I've done this before. It's like okay. Like I'm just calm about it. I'm just like it'll happen. So I don't I don't understand that. There's a like one thing that Gabe always comes to me for is like you gotta keep your team calm. Like if this team pressures you, like in the heat of the moment, just keep everybody calm and like that's that's what I am. I say that's something I'm good at. It's just really calm. Okay, so life. how do, so it's natural for you, but how do you just you just how I does just it happen? The trust just, in my abilities just and just does like yeah, I just put, like, the trust in my abilities. Like, I've done this for so long. I just know, like, I know what I can and cannot do. I'm very self-aware of, like, strengths and weaknesses of me. So, like, I know, like, what works for me and what doesn't. And I know what to do and what not to do. I'm just calm out there, confident in my abilities, I guess. You seem to have the perfect level of uh, analytical and, like, perfect balance of analytical and emotional and perfect level of I don't care. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, yeah, that, Kaylin you know, is not the overthinker. No, that's not the question for me. Not at Sam, all. It's important to have that. Her, uh, the overthinker, and I'm the one that's sitting there telling her, it's going to be okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wow. It's important to care less sometimes. It, it is. It works Especially wonderful. about outcomes. Yep. <laughs> Isn't it incredible how, you know, you need to work like your life depends on it. And then in the moment, realize it doesn't depend, your life doesn't depend on it. And yep. so, you know, work as hard as you possibly can and then relax in the moment. It's a, it's a simple, simple thing, but kind of hard to do at times. So Sam, how about you? So you're more passionate, more emotional, I take it, than Dr. Calm over here. So. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a good balance, I would say, as leaders. Yeah. Um, but for me, like if I'm struggling or going through a slump, sometimes I want to like try to do too much outside of basketball um, as like I just want to shoot too much or whatever it is. I'm just thinking too much about basketball. So I try to like have something else that I can do. Just do something that gets your mind off of it. Um, Cause that's really my thing is I just think way too much about how I'm playing or you know, how a game went or something like that. But you need to – I think it's good to have some kind of outlet or something else that you do, something else that you enjoy to just help you get your mind off of just basketball. What's one of those outlets? Oh, oh, 100%. Yeah, that was great. What about in the moment, though? Let's say, you know, let's say you're playing at uh, Reinhardt and, you know, everybody's yelling, the rest are terrible, everybody's going nuts, you know, you both – you you people are fouling out everything's going so how do you you've got the ball in your hand sam how do you clear your head there um i mean i think it just kind of goes to like you know like i know my teammates have confidence in me and my coaches have confidence in me and i just kind of have to rely on that in the moment like when it, when we're in a close game i'm always trying to like talk to my teammates like the five that are out there, if I'm out there and make sure like we're all on the same page. Um, Cause I feel like, you know, in that situation, if we're all calm, you know, if we have everything under control, then like, we'll be fine. And that's what makes me feel better in that situation. So really like you're talking, getting outside yourself saying, all right, here's what we're doing here. You have that person, person. And just working yeah. with you guys. I mean, now I remember it's coming back to me when I did my session with your team that, you're the you're the communicator, Sam, and Caitlin's really the quiet person on the floor. So, you know, trying to get Caitlin to talk more, but that calmness is great. So you both have to, you know, you're obviously good balance. Good, yeah, it really is. It really yeah. is. So, but getting outside yourself is always helpful in pressure situations. So that causes you not to overthink it if you're trying to help people get in those spots. All right, Josh. You know, it helps us a lot in life situations too. Honestly, you know, getting outside yourself a little bit can reduce a lot of anxiety. Um, 
Yes, it, it really can. All right, so we're going to finish up here. But before we finish up, Josh, I, I want let's ask these ladies, what is next for you after uh, – what is your next play? So, uh, Caitlin, what would you say for you is going to be the next play in your life? Going to be in the FBI because we're not going to the IRS, right? <laughs> well, so after basketball, I actually am thinking about coming back and coaching for a year. Ah, it's good. Come back yeah. and be the uh, Gabe's assistant, huh? Yeah. Uh, the GA. That basketball Jones going. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. They say me and Gabe are very a lot alike with like basketball IQ and like seeing the same thing. So I think I'm going to come back because for a year and then because applying for FBI, RS, all that, it takes a year. So I think I'm just going to coach basketball just to have something that I enjoy, something I'm comfortable with while I'm trying to like slowly change over to a different path in my life. How about you, Sam? What's your next play? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get into college coaching. So I'm currently looking at, you know, possibly coming back being a GA, um, looking at other places for being a GA. So hopefully getting my master's um, and then coaching too. We never let you answer that, finish that question, Josh, because Josh got on me like about what exercise and health was and everything. So you want to coach. Wow. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Now, you know, it's different than playing, right? Like it's. Oh, not... I know. Yeah. It's very <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got to channel some of that calm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, but you both want to coach in college, right? If, I mean, you, Sam, you want to coach long-term in college. So I, there's a lot of benefits to that. There really is, you know, but you got to be able to all day. That's the best part. That is the best part. Yeah. So, no anyway. teaching. Yeah. Yeah. No teaching. Well, Josh, it's always great to have you as my co-host ladies. My recommendation would be to Fun. you is first of all, you need to get me back and talk over Christmas because coach Johnson, we're talking, trying to arrange a date. I think that's one of the main things to, get y'all to the final four this year is that piece right there. But besides that, I just hope y'all enjoy the moment. Just enjoy this last season and then try to just take time every day to like, this is it. Let's just enjoy living the moment and uh, just uh, – because it'll be over and you're going to miss it because both of you are so good and such had such good success and being on really a really good team and having these great careers. That's pretty cool, Josh. It really is. So any other advice you yeah, would give really him is. to stay in the moment and enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, just to, just to, uh, you know, as far as staying in the moment, just remember you're playing a basketball game to try to win it. That's really it. Like yeah. there's, there's no more big existential thing hanging over you about your career legacy or anything like that. You're just playing a basketball game, trying to get one more basketball game. And even if you lose, if you win the last one, it's still sad when you, when you're done playing, it's, it's still sad. So yeah. like either way, you're going to be sad at the end and you might as well just go out there and have a good time. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. So any advice you would give to your younger self? Uh, Caitlin, I guess this is the last, last question I have. So, um, I would just say, like, keep working hard. I felt like there's a little time in my career where I was like, Am I gonna play college ball? And I think, like, it's worth it. I think that's what I would tell myself is just, It's worth it because, like, you get, you get to meet people, you get friends, you get experience, you get memories. Like, you also get to go out there and do something that you love. But there's being on a basketball team is so much more than just playing basketball as well. That's really cool. That's good. Yeah. How about you, Sam? Yeah, I would say just like to not stress about where I'm going to end up. Um, Cause you know, like with the other school I was at, I faced, you know, just a lot of adversity through that and it was hard, but through that, like I learned a lot and um, became a better person and a better basketball player through it. So, but there was also just a lot of, times where I was just stressing about every little thing so if I could go back I would just tell myself to relax <laughs> yeah 
That's great. That's beautiful. Well, ladies, thank you so much. And again, to our listeners, hey, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on YouTube or on Spotify. And uh, this will pro- this is going to come out uh, after Christmas. So we hope everyone has had a uh, wonderful Christmas uh, holiday. And uh, ladies, good luck to you. Tell Coach Johnson hello. And we will see you next time. We'll see you.